So, good morning, everyone. The name of the Lord be praised. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your mercy. Your name be glorified. In Jesus' precious name. Good morning, every one of us. Thank you for finding time to be part of this morning program. The Lord God of heaven will grant each and every one of us a time of refreshing in his presence. Praise the Lord. What a joy. What a heart of gratitude every one of us must possess right now for God to have enabled us to see these days. To him alone be all the glory. Still looking at our topic, finishing strong. This is very, very important because the way of uh, the way we end the year has a lot of influence, and the way we start the new one, and that is why we are preparing heavily for our glorious takeoff of the year 2023. For us as a ministry, we are already in it already. But as you wait for the whole world to join us, there is need for us to keep on looking at his world. We talk about, in the last episode, we talk about securing his presence. And we saw in Psalm 114 what happened when God followed his people, when the presence of God followed his people. And that is why we still continue to explore this topic and see what God has in stock for each and every one of us. I would like to read a bit of that passage as a way of connecting to what God has to say to us today. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. It's a 114. He said, when Israel went out of Egypt, he said, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language, he said, Judah was his sanctuary and Israel his dominion. He said the sea saw it and fled. They were too strong for the sea. Jordan was driven back. The mountains skipped like ram, and the little hill like lamb. What led thee, O thou sea, that thou fledest? Thou Jordan, that thou was driven back. Hmm. And he said, Ye mountain that ye skip like Ram and ye little hill like the lamb, tremble thou at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of God of Jacob. Now, you can see how Israel suddenly became a formidable army, too strong for the enemy to handle. That was just because of God's presence. Today we'll be looking at what also we can do to make sure we finish strong. I will be looking at the place of prayer. The place of prayer. Now, the Bible talks about prayer in this way and he attributed the answer to prayer to God. Oh, thou that hearest prayer. The one that hears is the one that answer. Call upon me, and I will answer you. And show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. 
we all know that the man with the light into a situation is a strong man. Because light has dominion any day, any time, anywhere over darkness. He said, call unto me and I will answer thee. And I will show, the word show means, I will give you light into that situation. I will show thee. You need light to see. I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. When God answer your prayer, he illuminates your heart with light into that matter. I know any day, any time, the dominion of light over darkness is not debatable. Light makes you stronger than your darkness. And that's one of the benefits of calling on, upon God on altar of prayer. He said, call unto me and I will answer thee. This is what my answer will be. My answer is not going to be handling over to you a product, but my answer will be handling over to you a process. A man with a product can be lost, can record losses, because the product can be stolen. But a man with that process has what it takes to reproduce the product over and over. And that is one of the benefits of prayer. Call unto me and I will answer thee. And my answer will be to give you light. And that light will be so great and mighty regarding what you didn't know before. So light make people strong. Light makes people strong. Light inject strength. So you want to finish strong, then you must embrace the privilege you have in God and exploit the altar of prayer. You exploit it because on it, God answer by giving light. My emphasis is the word light there. Light makes you strong. Light means insight, information, revelation. They make people strong. And I see you coming out very strong in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Light make people very strong. Light make people very strong. Now, let's continue to see how altar of prayer injects strength. Let's continue to see how altar of prayer make people strong. Let's look at Luke Chapter 22, Luke 22, and now we read from verse number 40. Luke 22 and verse number 40. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone cast and knelt down and prayed. Look at, look at that. And knelt down and prayed. Say, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And look at the response of heaven to Jesus. He prayed to the Father. We can see it in verse 42. Look at how God showed him great 
and mighty things. And there appear an angel unto him. We know who angels are. Angels are spiritual messenger who are often assigned to minister to the saints. They are God's messenger through which God sent an errand or carry out his promises. And there appear an angel unto him from heaven. What were they doing? Strengthening him. He has just prayed in verse 42. He began the prayer in verse 41. He knelt down. Verse 42, he prayed. Verse 43, an angel appeared to the response of his prayer. And what were they doing? They were making, they were strengthening him. And he said, and being agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as it were a great drop of blood falling down to the ground. Hmm. We have seen practically here that one of the way through which Jesus draws strength as he was also coming to the conclusion of his ministry is by prayer. Prayer. It was getting tougher. It was getting tougher in verse 40. And then he entered into that place and then knelt down and prayed that he entered not into temptation. That's what the advice he gave. And when he withdrew from them, about to still cast, he knelt down and prayed. We will all recall that the behavior of Jesus in this segment of his ministry was different from the disciples. And I believe what made the difference was the prayer. Because we were told that in verse 45, when he arose from the prayer, he was come to his disciples. He found them sleeping for sorrow, not for strength. He found them sleeping. They were facing the same situation. But one was stronger in prayer and in composure. And the other were very sleepy and full of sorrow. What was it that Jesus did that the disciples didn't do? We can see that Jesus knelt down and prayed. And heaven responded to his prayer. It is the prayer that made the difference in their behavior. And that's why when in verse 47, uh, in verse, uh, verse 46, and he said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, so that you can be strong like me. Rise and pray. Rise and pray. Rise and pray. Lest he enter into temptation. You are becoming weaker. And here is my recommendation. Rise and pray. And truly, I don't know how long you have been with the Lord. Every time we call upon his name on the altar of prayer from a sincere heart, there's always grace for continuity in form of strength that will come upon you. Rise and pray. You see, Jesus' recommendation here point to the fact that prayer injects divine strength. That's what he did and was able to continue. That is what was lacking in his disciples that they were asleep and they felt they feel like sorrow. Therefore, I want to strongly recommend for you, if you see this, this, this revelation this morning, it will bat a revolution when you are face to face with challenges. Remember why the end is always uh, it's always dicey. It is because as you are approaching to the end, you may not have seen some expectation come to pass as it is stipulated in the scripture. 
He says, surely there is an end and the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. Now, you are coming to an end of a thing or an end of a year and certain things are not in place. You are likely to be weak because the light of the eyes rejoices the heart. What you are seeing may not be pleasant to you. So, therefore, your heart is likely to begin to be wearied like that of the disciple. They couldn't pray. They couldn't do anything. But the, the Bible says, Jesus knelt down and prayed. And as soon as he finished the prayer, verse 43 was in place. And there appeared a response to his prayer from heaven. Appear unto him. Remember, they are in the same vicinity. But what appeared to Jesus did not appear to them. The angel was able to differentiate between the people that pray and the people that didn't pray. They were all in the same area. But only the one that prayed received strength. That's why when he came back, he pointed to them. Excuse me, you want to be strengthened? You want to be strengthened like I am strengthened? This is the way to it. You want this sleep, satanic sleep, sleep of death. You want it to come to an end. Here is the here is the the the, the solution. Rise and pray. Very precise. Rise and pray. Lest ye enter. If you look at an uh, NIV version, it said when he rose from prayer and went back to the disciple, he found them asleep, exhausted. I love that word. They are not strong, exhausted. You can imagine that was about the time that more, uh, that the, that the very important thing was to be done. Jesus was about to be crucified. He's about to receive the strike, the the, the 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 king, the stripe that brought the healing to humanity. He was about to shed his blood. In fact, some gave account of how many times, some theologians have given account of how many times Jesus shed his blood, and they are significant. He was about to shed the first one because they said his sweat was like the blood. Remember, he was about to give them the last word, and suddenly, satanic sleep fell on them. They were exhausted from sorrow, well, from sorrow. And we know what he said in verse 46 of, uh, of Luke. He said, why are you sleeping? He asked them, get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. You will be very, very strong. You will be very, very strong. If you look at verse 47, you will know that that sleep and exhaustion was demonic. Because they said, while he was still speaking, a crowd came up. And the man who was called Judas, one of the disciples, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus asked Judas, asked him, Judas, are you betraying me, son of man, with a kiss? You know, that was a crucial moment. That was a crucial moment that if you are asleep and miss it, I'm sure it will affect, if, if, if Jesus has not intervened for them, it will have affected their performance after the departure of Jesus. Because it will mean they never ended well. The, the act of apostle will not be the way it was. It will have been something different. So there is always this satanic sleep. This sleep does not mean closing your eyes. It could mean laxity. Remember, God said the end of every matter is better than the beginning. So imagine you sleeping at the end. So you will miss out with the best of God. And this is what happens to us most of the time. When we are closer to the tail, it's when the enemy strike most. With distraction, with confusion, with mockery. And begin to cast doubt in your heart to doubt the word of God. The very last stage is always the best stage of God. 
And Jesus told them, the only cure to this is to rise up and pray. Because he did exactly that. And he enjoyed divine intervention. I believe that is why the apostle learned, learned it from. If you check Act of Apostles, chapter 4, Act of Apostles, chapter number 4, and from verse 28, you will discover that the disciple almost have the same scenario. Look at it from verse 26. Let me just read from 26. It said, The king of the earth stood up, and the ruler were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child, Jesus, whom thou hast anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together. For to do what whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, listen to this, and now, Lord, behold their threatening. You know, they also came to arrest Jesus. He said, Behold their threatening and grant unto thy servant, they began prayer already, that with all boldness they may speak the word, thy word. By stretching off thy hand to heal, and thy signs and wonder may be done by thy name of thy holy child Jesus. Look at verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken. I'm sure. If we compare this scripture to Acts chapter 16, the angel were there already. The angel were there. You remember the angel came. God's presence came into the cell of Silas and Paul. And there was an earthquake. The Bible says, and the place were shaking. And where they were assembled together, not the whole earth. Just like when the angel came, he attended to only Jesus. It was only the place where they were and where they were offering prayer that was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. You know what the Holy Ghost does? He strengthened people. Remember, the apostles, they have abandoned, they have partially abandoned their mission until Acts chapter 2. They were in fear. Acts chapter 1 showed that they were in fear. But they all the same went to the upper room. And began to pray. And the Bible said, when the Pentecost was fully come, there was a mighty rushing wind that also strengthened them. Boom! And that was the beginning of explosion that we call the that, we, that was recorded in the book of Acts. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. What happened? They pray for boldness. That means they were no longer bold. But after they prayed, the power that came emboldened them again. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither say any of them that out of things which he possessed were his own, but they had all things in common. Verse 33, and with great power, can you see that? With great power. Where did this power came from? From the prayer that they pray. It was as a result of divine intervention of the prayer they pray because they pray for it and great power gave the apostle witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. Great grace was upon them all. Beloved, as we are coming to the end of this year, you therefore need to repair your altar of prayer like Elijah did. He repaired the altar of prayer and fire fell. Fire fell. Fire fell. I pray for you today that at this period of time that you need to be strong, you will acknowledge that prayer play a major role. There is no argument. Here it is. Here it is. I want you to take your time to engage on spiritual revelation that has meaning. Don't go around reading nonsense. Some things are nonsense. They don't make many. They don't make many. He said we have more sure word of prophecy. More sure of prophecy. Not philosophy. Not doctrine of men. Altar of prayer is altar of renewal of, 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 of strength. Altar of prayer 
we remain the place for renewal of our spiritual strength. It's a place of renew our faith. You remember in the Old Testament, it said, we will go to Gilgal and there we will renew the altar. When Elijah came on the scene, the first thing he did was to renew the broken altar. And one of the altar that can easily be broken in the life of a believer is the altar of his prayer. Is the altar of his prayer. That is why early in the morning, Jesus drew strength from God. And this early hour of today, I was just meditating. How does prayer he ended up injecting power? How does prayer ended up with, uh, uh, injecting prayer? I mean, how does prayer in, ended up injecting strength? And the Lord made me to understand that you can't talk to the one that is powerful and not be powerful. You can't talk to the one that is powerful. Prayer ought to give us opportunity to talk to God Almighty. You can't talk with the one that is powerful and not be powerful. Check Ezekiel chapter 2. Ezekiel chapter 2, and I read from verse number 1. Ezekiel chapter number 2, and I will read from verse number 1. You will discover that the one you talk to inject something into you. Every word either carry power or fear. Ezekiel chapter number two and verse number one. He said, and he said unto me, son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee, and I will speak unto thee. Remember in John chapter 6 from verse 62, he said, the word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Every word contains a spirit and the spirit expresses itself in a kind of life. Now, verse 2, and the spirit enter into me. Where was the spirit here? Where is this? Look at it very well. Where is the spirit coming from? He said, and he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. Now, he said, and the Spirit enter into me when he spake unto me. There is a Spirit inside every word spoken. And that Spirit that enter into Ezekiel, he said, he set me upon my feet. He gave me strength to stand. And I had him that spake. When you look at John, you will see they say, the word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Now, and God said, call upon me and I will answer you and show you. So what does he mean? What does he mean? When you pray to God and God sent you an answer, the spirit comes unto you. The spirit of his mightiness come unto you. It enter you. It enters into you. The powerful God spirit enter into you. And this should not be surprising because we saw it, what happened to the clay in Genesis. The Bible says, and the Lord breathed into the clay, and the clay became a living soul. So the spirit that enters you determines what you become. When the spirit of the almighty God enter into a clay, he became a living soul because he is a living God. The part of God was imparted by his spirit. So when you talk to God on altar of prayer and you secure an answer, you know what happened to you? The part, the nature of God, which includes strength and might into you. And when it comes into you, you become stronger. When God answered Jesus, the angel came down and strengthened him. Don't joke around with the altar of, of prayer. That was what happened to Anna. Anna was very sorrowful. Anna was very sorrowful in Shiloh. But after she prayed, after Anna prayed, the Bible says her countenance changed. Nobody wiped her face. The face was wiped from the inside. And at the end of the day, we all know the story. After Hannah prayed, her countenance 
changed. She was no longer sorrow. What happened? Strength had been injected into her. She says she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept sore. Now, if you go on, you will discover she made a vow. And in verse 12, I believe, verse 12, verse 12 of that same scripture, and it came to pass, as he was what? As one continued to pray before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. You see, she was praying, Eli marked her mouth. Verse 13. Verse 13. Anna's, uh, Anna, uh, let, me, let me read from my own Bible. The person projecting there is not projecting well. Put the scripture aside so that those who are also watching can read the scripture you are projecting. Now, after Hannah prayed, because she expressed her heart, only her lip move, not make it bigger, project it so that it can be on side by itself, please. Now, after Hannah prayed, this is what the scripture has to say about it. Something unique happened. Her, her mouth was moving. Hey, who is on this screen for God's sake? Can you leave the scripture the way it is, please? Her voice was not heard. Now, Eli thought she was drunk, but that was not the case. That was not the case. She wasn't drunk. There was something going on in her heart because it is a communication of heart. You know, we receive prayer, answer to our prayer via our heart. Now, look at verse 12. It said, and it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli mark her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart only, her lip moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. And on and on, verse 15. And Anna answered and said, No, my Lord. Let's, let's, let's go to... Let's go to... Verse 18. And she said, let the handmaid find grace in thy side. So the woman went her way and did eat. She was not eating before. And her countenance was no more sad. What, what happened here? What changed everything? I want to let you know the difference between Hannah and other that were in Shiloh was the prayer she uttered. As you maintain a sound altar of prayer, you will always continuously enjoy divine strength. I see you finishing strong in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Now, you can't pray to God that you don't know. You cannot pray to God that you don't know. You will not be certain of an answer. This morning, if you are not born again, I would like you to invite Jesus into your life. I would like you to invite Jesus into your life. We were dead in our sins and our trespasses, but that's the lifestyle. That is the lifestyle. That's why the Bible says, and we're by nature children of wrath. But as you invite Jesus into your life, he take over your life with the Bible considered to be dead, but he's still alive. He take that dead life and then replace it and give you eternal life. That's how it happens. Everything that moves have life. All your ungodly activity is a lifestyle. When Jesus comes to you, he will take it the same way he took the life of Peter and change it. And it will be by your invitation. I want you to invite Jesus to come and take over this deadly life that you are having right now and give you a new life that is in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 8 said, There is therefore no more condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the, after the flesh, but after the life, the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus. There is life that is in Christ Jesus, and there is life that is in the dead unbeliever. But as you invite him this hour, he will come into your life. He said, with heart, man believe it. 
and with mouth confession is made unto salvation. As you receive Jesus this morning and renounce your sin, and renounce your sin and invite Jesus into your life, he will come right into your life. And that will make a big difference. One of the difference it will make, it will bring an end to your current crisis in life and give you a new life. It is well with your soul. If you are there right now, you want to say, Jesus, cleanse me, wash my sin. I'm ready to pray with you. Say after me, Lord Jesus, thank you for today. I invite you. We've just read it. Say, call upon me. I invite you, Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me my sin and my trespasses. I confess today that you are the son of the living God, that you died and you rose from grave for my sake. Jesus, Save me. Wash me. Give me eternal life. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' precious name. Because I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you are the Son of the living God. Thank you. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. The address on the wall right now, on your screen right now, is our contact. Get in touch with us. The second banner that comes on your screen at the physical address of our of our churches in various locations. Please endeavor, if you have prayed this prayer, to fellowship with, with us in any of these churches that is convenient for you, depending on the city where you are located. And in case we are far away from you, look for a Bible-believing church. And then you will find opportunity to be led and be guided. Look for a Bible-believing church and begin to go to church, where you'll be taught the word of the Lord and you will fully grow to differentiate between wrong and right. The Lord bless you. The Lord prosper you. For the rest of us, it's time to worship the Lord with our substance. Heavenly Father, the, 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 the platform are displayed. You want to do bank transfer, whatever it is, the platform are there. Everyone that gives his support in contribution of his resources to the kingdom or to the advancement of the kingdom, God said he will pay them life here and life which is to come. God bless you as you do that very fast. Father, accept our offering. Use it for the advancement of your kingdom. And in return, bless each and every one of us. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Don't forget today, in this festivity time, uh, the midday prayer will only come on Wednesday. So join Mama in the mid in the course of the day to the pastor, Mrs. Wally Joseph, as you engage in prayer. Strike when your iron is hot. You have just had now. You can't afford to miss that session. And I strongly recommend it's not only for women. There is no female service. There is no female Holy Ghost. God service as many that comes unto him. May you find the service this afternoon. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. It is well with your soul. Be blessed of God. Have a, a, a godly afternoon. And make sure you keep your altar of prayer fresh. Be blessed.